Okay, we're looking at another Moira Vod review. Uh, I don't know what rank this is, but somebody sent me a code, said that they went uh, four and zero after, after practicing some tips uh, that they learned from different people. Um, and then this game was a lot, so they're just trying to look for, uh, look for some more opportunities. So right out of the gate, I've never shot an orb out, out of the door in here. I never even never even occurred to me to shoot one that early. Let's see where it goes. Nowhere. Okay. So what I usually do. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, pause it real quick. If you hit it like right at the edge of this door, you can fade jump up here. Uh, I. Or, if you, actually I don't even think you have to do that anymore, you can fade jump basically from like right here and get up there. It used to be before they, they increased the height you got on fade when you jumped, uh, you'd have to do it from here. But I think the easier way to do it more consistently is to get to about here, fade jump, come up here, go down. And as soon as you drop, shoot a damage orb here, and it looks like you did. Uh, and then it'll bounce against this wall and head back. So, anyway, this just does uh, something specific to this map. Let's back up a little bit. Um, you're shooting that at an upward angle, so it's probably not. I'm not going to get a ton of value. It looks like you accidentally got value because it bounced against something and then went down. So you're going to accidentally get value from this. Instead of accidentally getting value, let's get intentional value and try and try and shoot it against a flat surface there. Right? So cool, it worked out. That's awesome. I love it when that happens. Um, but for more consistency, let's do that. Now, in this case, I wouldn't have shot the orb there because the fight's already happening on the point. I always look for uh, flat bounces where I can make an orb go back and forth. And in this case, depending on how the fight's going, let's see, you got Cass and Widow. And the Cass is over here. It, it's, it's a tough call, but at this point, I probably would still shoot a damage orb, but I'd shoot it like right here, so it bounces back and forth. Or the same thing basically in any of these walls. So, let's keep going. So you're, the far is just off to your left, so this is uh, an opportunity to get punished. Yeah, right off the bat here, it, just, it seems like your orb usage is, is kind of uh, lacking. <laughs> I don't know the, the non-mean way to say that, I, I don't want to sound like a, a dick, but it, you know, you're shooting a damage orb at your team. Uh, that's going to bounce off and go, uh, well, it hit one of the weird angles, come back towards you. It's still going to come back, go behind you, do nothing. And it sounds like it's accidentally hitting the uh, far over here. That's interesting. So you've gotten lucky with a couple of your orbs. Um, that one you're not going to get lucky with, right? That just went nowhere. Good orb. Again, right, shoot it against something flat where it's going to bounce around. Because it looks like, just like with a lot of players, they shoot the orb at whoever they're looking at, and then that's it. That, they don't care what the orb does after that, or they don't think about what the orb does after that. So, uh, think about that kind of stuff. Uh, and another thing that I want everybody to do that you're not doing is look around look around a lot you don't really know what's going on around you and it's because you're not looking around good i like the pressure good so i'm not going to pause anymore when this happens but i am going to point out every time you shoot a bad orb so you can kind of see how fast that stuff adds up and how little value you're getting from these orbs um, by not, not shooting them in a way where you're going to get the most value out of them. Thank you. So right now, go back. 
to right while you're looking here. So I guess uh, since you have your orb off cooldown, shooting one like right here is awesome because it bounces here, bounces there, and then it'll it'll go off and hit the team. You can so you also be able to tell if somebody's there already, um, and it's good just to use something instead of doing nothing. Uh, and then also if you hear somebody uh, like in the top right, you can also um, shoot the orb up there. So that's better, right? It, it was it was accidentally better because you're shooting it at the at the ball. You shot it at him instead of at the wall. But if you look at where it went, it hit the flat wall, right, and it bounced back and it headed towards the point. This is awesome. This is what you this is what you want to do the most often. And as I've said in other videos, what I like about shooting orbs this way against the flat wall, it'll bounce off this wall, and then it will go back, and it'll hit the enemies from behind, and a lot of times that'll make them use a cooldown, It'll because they don't know where the damage is coming from, uh, it'll make them panic a little bit, and it's very distracting, so just keep that in mind. I like the pressure here, it's good. Um, you're playing with fire when you're, you're challenging a Widow like that, and uh, I 100% dive Widows. Uh, Moira all the time because Moira's really good at it, but you don't want to be right here, right? You the Moira killed you, but the the widow hit you. She's the one that did all the damage. So you have to um, you have to respect the widow. I don't care if this is bronze five. If if it's if it's against a, a player that can one-shot you, or a, a hero that can one-shot you, that, you know, it's better to not play with fire, though. You know, don't like that damage orb. See, another another orb you didn't get value from. Sure, heal a little bit. Good. I like that you shot the damage orb, and then faded, and then... Uh, coalescence? Uh, a better combination would be to fade first, then damage orb, and then coalesce. So, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things are going on all at the same time here. So let's break it down. All right, one. Surrender to my will. They used beat before you ulted. Don't ult into a beat. You're gonna do almost nothing, right? More result does decent damage, but it's not really good damage. So you have to use it to basically nine times out of ten. If I'm coalescing, it's because I see somebody I can eliminate, right? Either they're low health, or I can get the drop on them, like surprise them, and shoot a damage orb and coalescence, and usually you can beam them down before they they can do anything useful. Uh, you're you're going to get no value out of this ult. Because they, they just beat it. The other thing, or the next thing, is you hit like seven different people at seven different times, right? Coalescence is one of those ults where you kind of want to maximize your distance from the players you want to get in the beam because that way it's easier to line them all up in the same beam. Okay, so when you're bouncing around players like this, you know, you're, you're going to get almost no value out of it. You see how their Moira is only beating the monkey? Like, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I don't think that they did a good value pull up either because they're they're beaming basically a half health tank. They're not going to kill him. Um, so, you know, that, that was not a good call up either, but I like that they stayed on the same target the entire time. All right, so in another, the next part is, oh, and I forgot to talk about the last thing to your coalescence. Um, you... You were in view of the Widow for way too long. Um, I can tell this isn't a higher rank because that Widow would have killed you. Um, basically, if I coalesce in front of a Widow, I'm, pro I'm probably dead. You know, I'm, There's the off chance that I won't die and she'll miss or something like that, but that's very rare, very rare. So if you want to, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's practice where set, up, set yourself up to be where you want to be. And what I mean by that is, sure, you can probably get away with coalescing in front of a widow in whatever rank this is, but you know the next rank up, probably not the case. So why why build bad habits? Okay. Um, and then I'm not going to pause it again. I'll just keep talking here. 
Now that blade wasn't very effective, uh, but if you would have still had coalescence, um, a lot of times I will coalesce the blade if they don't dash at me first, because you can draw them away from their from who they're trying to get, and they'll head towards you. I'll trade a blade for a coalescence any day of the week, right? And I don't, uh, you know, it might kill you and it might not. But if they chase you, get away from your team, they only kill you versus, you know, getting a four-man blade. Um, and they also don't have um, Ana, so they don't they can't nano blade. So you, a lot of times you can actually just pull up with the blade and uh be able to get you. But that just takes that takes practice. I like the damage roar there, it's good, keep the pressure on. Um, I don't like this goal at all. One, your orb is off of cooldown, so you shoot an orb. And two, you're, you're looking at all of them, and, and right, and it, it makes it a lot harder for you to put any pressure, because once again, Hanzo is another character that can one-shot you, right? I just realized I've been tired. They didn't have a widow. Or did they? They must have had a widow. I'm second guessing myself. Did they have a widow the last time when you ulted last? <laughs> Maybe they didn't. I'm talking out of my ass. I swear they had a widow. Okay, they did. All right. I'm not totally losing my mind. Okay. Yeah, and you did call up the part of the widow. Oh man, I'm, I was having a senior moment there. <laughs> okay. Let's get back up to where you guys got 96 percent when you open. No one. Okay. Let's right about when you ult. Okay. So, uh, you have, I think you have Fade. Yes, you do. So you have Fade available to you when you, when you, when you ult. Here's, here's what I do instead, here, what I would recommend, right? Especially because it's about to be the, you know, you guys are pushing to, to win. So I like the ult to keep the pressure on them. So I like it for that. What I don't like it for is you're basically in Hanzo's face, someone who can one-shot you. Yes, you're in the bubble, but that bubble's going to break or it's going to force you to stay behind the bubble, okay? What I would like to do is fade over here, coalescence towards them, and stay near cover against the Hanzo, but it still makes him turn around. And when he turns around to try and look at you, it allows your team to just jump in and, and finish him off, right? See how you're kind of stuck in the bubble now? Now, you, what you did was you kind of made space, right? It, it made it harder for them to push onto the point, and that ended up working. That's good. But when you're looking in, at ways to get more value every single time, that's how you want to think about it. So, good. Alright, it looks like it's downhill from here, because you, <laughs> you won the first one. I almost always go high ground here. And here's, here's my philosophy about high ground. With uh oh, back there, I'm gonna get a work. High ground, it's easy, it's super easy to drop from high ground to low ground. But it's not always easy to go from low ground to high ground. And on some characters that's even more true. Like some characters it's almost impossible to go back to high ground once you drop. Well it's not the case, but you typically want to go high ground. And where would you tank during this? Because I think your tank went high ground and you get Yeah, because your tank's up here. Right, you get, you get... This, up here, would have been good for you to be in that fight. Now they're on Reaper, right? It's going to be hard. I think your tank's going to switch. But, still, I... There wasn't really a reason for you to go on the low ground. Oh. You just responded to me <laughs> while I'm doing it. So this is Bronze 4. I dealt with 
So always think about high ground whenever you can. Run along the high ground when you, when you can do it. Uh, because then you can always drop down. Okay, so Moira's beam is 20 meters. Now I don't, I know that doesn't really mean anything. Um, but to put it in perspective of how long that is, how far you can beam with it, Roadhog's hook and uh, Brigitte's whip shot are all the same distance as how far you can beam. So when you see those things happen, that's kind of how far, get an idea of how far you can use your beam. I like it. You know, the ore didn't get a ton of value, uh, like, strictly number-wise, but you force the BAP out of there. Now he can just jump out and then jump back down and all that. But you forcing them to to get out of there is good. I like that. Uh, now this Reaper can die if he's got no fade. That's pretty good teleport. But yeah, no, he dies on the left. So it's good, right? You go over here, put pressure on him, good. Did you fade into that? Don't 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 fade into this because you didn't know what was around this corner, right? So you could get one shot very easily, uh, and you're also gonna or you're gonna get punished for it. So I was gonna say you get punished when you use your fade to go into a bad position. You're almost always gonna get punished for it, and especially against a, a Ramatra where you can just do that punching thing, which makes me insane. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna do that. So. That's insane. That's good old by your cab to stop the, um, stop the visor. Over there. So, here's one of those instances, and I, if you haven't watched the video of me playing in a Silver 4 match and just talking about how I'm always looking for value, this is one of those instances where you're not really doing anything. And this is this times like this is when you get value uh, that the other team is not going to get. And what I mean in this example is, yeah, you shot that damage orb over there, but you're kind of just hanging around the point, right? You're not putting pressure on anybody. You know, you're not you're not, you're not healing anybody. That, that doesn't matter. But the big thing is you're not really putting pressure on, on anybody. So. Uh, a place on this map specifically I like to go is go up these stairs right here and there's that little like balcony that's right behind them but on the high ground. It's kind of where their bap is right now. Uh, and I'll go shoot a damage orb at them from there, tickle them a little bit, right? Make them turn around, distract them. Because if you can get like one or two of them to turn around but then the others keep going through the choke, right? You're splitting their team up. So even though you're not, you're probably not going to kill anybody, Making them turn around like that and adjust their focus is going to open up a ton of, take a ton of pressure off of your team when they're trying to deal with this over here. So uh, look for that kind of stuff where you, you can get in there. Because if you go over here and start doing that, this is where you use fade. You can use fade to get out of there if you need to, but a lot of times you don't even need to because, I'll actually go over there, go up the stairs, right? See the BAP is here. Now he's by himself. I would 100% duel a bat. I would, I would go in here, I'd shoot a healing orb at the floor, make it bounce on the ceiling, and just go to town on this dude. Make him use his uh, lamp, you know, and if he kills you, okay, no big deal. But, you know, the, Moira's strengths are being, is being able to do stuff like this. Moira's, I, I would say, one of the best duelists in the game just because of how forgiving her aim is for the beam at how skinny she is and how much self-sustain she has through her healing. So, but what I'm talking about is I, I pop out here, shoot a damage orb against this window thing or whatever, like right here, so it kind of bounces back and forth. Right? Let's pretend the bat's not there. Say everybody's on the low ground. Right? You're doing it from right here, shooting at them, tickling them a little bit. They turn around and look at you. As soon as they do that, you just step behind cover. Now they can't shoot you. But they're still going to be looking, right? You're still getting value. Right? It's not number value, but you're distracting them. And then you can kind of pop out right, and, and uh, be a, a nuisance effectively. Then, if somebody does come up here and challenge you that you can't deal with or don't want to deal with, then you fade. Fade out to here. Join the rest of your team. All right? um, other things, right? come up here on the high ground. Right? Your Ash is about to get hosed by this, this cast, or I mean this uh, Reaper. 
right? Go put some pressure on, on the reaper. Go tickle the reaper. And stay on the high ground. You can always fall back down. Okay? So there's, you can see there's a, a lot of opportunities uh, for you to gain some value for your team uh, that we're not looking at right now. So that Reaper is now up there, and your Diva, or I mean your Diva, your, um, saying his name, your Ash is dead. So I feel like that's going to pause here in a second. Nobody knows. Nobody's looking at the Reaper. So the Coalescence, again, um, I like that orb bounce, but bounce it off this wall, right? Bounce it off a wall where it's going gonna, it's gonna to bounce more times, right? And that just, again, goes back to shooting it against the wall versus shooting it at the player. Okay. Every time you coalesce, I want you to practice this. Go into a quick play game, or, or go into comp, whatever. Go into a game, and as soon as you get your ult, or you think you want to use it, you need to, like, take that extra second and be like, okay, why am I using this? Because this is now the second time that you have, now it's towards the end of it, the second time you have ulted into a beat. Nobody is within lethal damage, right? So coalescence can come sometimes be used for that. I typically don't use it for that because I feel like half the time I do it, I'm too late anyway. Uh, so use, you know, you're not using it to save lethal damage. Nobody's low, so you're not going to focus down anyone, right? So Ask yourself, why am I using my coalescence right now? And it's gonna kind of, so this is good, this is good. Imagine, so coalescence is eight seconds, right? When did you start doing that? When did you start chasing him? Okay, so right about here, three. So five seconds into your eight-second ult is when you finally started getting value from it. Imagine if the if Blizzard nerfed Moira's ult to only be three seconds long. That would suck, right? But that's what you just did. So just think about that, right? You need to get all eight seconds of that ult. So ult lane, I like it. I like what you did, but do that first, right? Fade over here, because your team's over here, they're looking, and the enemy team's looking over here. Fade this way, damage orb, coalescence. Because it's going to make some space, it's going to make them turn their attention on you, which takes the attention away from your team, right, and allows you to get a lot more value. That's good damage orb. You see how it's bouncing around like that? Good. So, when the enemy Ramaka ult, you, you basically just have to see the FL, right? You, you, you fade it away, but then you stay there. You, you can't outfeel that ult, so you need to just get out. You need to get out of its, its um, range, basically. He can also outrun you, so you, fade is a very powerful tool to get away from Ramatra's no, ult. So, if, in, unless you can kill the Ramatra, you need to get away from it, because you're not going to outfeel it. So again, add this to the list. Use your orbs for for something useful, right? Think think about your orbs, okay? Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily do this in a comp game, but if you go in an unranked game, every time your orb comes up, like, okay, what am I going to get out of this orb? I want you to think about what what is the ultimate value I'm going to get out of this? Where is it going to go? I want you to think about where this orb is going to be when it when it um, expires. You should know that, right? I'm not saying you should, you know, perfectly know it, right? I'm not some friggin' math whiz, right? I just know where my orbs are always going to be all the time. But I know where they're going to be for the first several seconds, for sure. So know where they are and know where they're going to go before you use it. So think about that. Go into a game. All you're going to do is shoot orbs and say, okay, this is... I'm. 
I'm going to shoot this orb here because I know it's going to go there, 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 and there, and it's going to bounce into the enemy team. Okay. One thing I will say, I, your, your use of cover is actually really good. Um, it, it could definitely, obviously, there's always room for improvement everywhere. Um, but I, I would say your overall your use of cover is pretty good. Like, I like your hugging near these corners, that's good. I like the aggression here. 100 I like that. I don't know if you finally got aggressive because you guys are about to lose, or or what, but if you do that stuff more often, you're gonna win more fights. 100 percent <laughs> Did you... Okay. Melee does... Uh, I want to say it's 35 damage. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I want to say it's 35 damage. So while sitting there meleeing somebody is not as much DPS as your beam, uh, it is a higher burst. So when somebody gets low enough, just melee them. I actually have my melee bound, bound up to a mouse button. Okay. Never, ever, ever, ever use Coalescence into a Ramatra when he can go into Nemesis form and, and beat you. He can outrun you in it, which I think is total crap, but he can. This, he, right now, he can tear you apart, right? He's going to, right? You're going to ultimately die to the soldier, but he did all the damage. So I guess I can see why you ulted. You ulted because it looks like he's alone and you want everybody to focus on him. I, Sure, you can do that, but you need to get away from him. Right? Something I tell everybody is the, the coalescence beam is like eight miles long or some shit like that. Right? It's, it's a really long ultimate. Get as far away as you can while still doing damage. There's no fall off from it. Right? So get away from him. If he's in nemesis form... You know, he's got a punch range, but it's not very far. Certainly not as far as Coalescence, right? So get away from him. And do it that way. Also, if you would have gotten away from him, you either would have pulled the soldier's aggro, and he tries to shoot at you, but you got a lot of self-sustain, uh, or you pull it far enough away that you can put pressure on the soldier, right? There's a lot of what-ifs here, but the big thing is... is the farther you are away from the, the people that you want to coalescence, one, the more of the battlefield you're going to be be able to see at the same time, and then two, the easier it is to line people up, right? When they're when you're farther away from them, when when you're farther away, they're all going to appear closer together. So, use that to to aim, and then of course, the last thing is you don't want to be within melee range of a uh, um, Ramatra and Nemesis form because you're just going to get Jumped on. Wade, get out, sir. Cool. I like that you're on that side of the window. Um, but if, what I would do there is 100%. I would damage orb this guy and and start beaming him because it's gonna he's gonna stop shooting everybody when you do that. So you did put the pressure on, but put the pressure on with a uh, damage orb. Now would that have swung the fight? Maybe not. Because you guys were already down, but right, give yourself the chance for that to happen. So you can kind of see how that, using that coalescence and then dying there, that really hurt your team. Right? You can, that's not to say that everybody else didn't make big mistakes too, but you can't control that. The only thing you can control is what you do. Alright, so let's, uh... A little, little slow out of the gate. It's one of those minor things. This is competitive, so, you know, give yourself every advantage. Good damage orb spot on this map is just that wall right there, bouncing against that wall, and it'll come back. It, it makes it harder for them to push up onto this high ground here. Or if they're all over here, you can just bounce it against this wall, and it'll bounce, bounce, and then 
Uh, get them over there. Don't fade into danger. I guess you're going to get punished for this. Maybe you won't, but I, I guess you are. Uh, don't fade into danger if you don't have a reason to. So, like, fading into danger sometimes, you know, if I'm going to secure a low health target, none of these people are low health, and they're probably all going to look at you. Maybe they won't, but soldiers are already looking at you. Okay. Or if I'm going to fade over here to coalescence or something like that, because now you're fading over here and you have no cooldowns. Right, a higher rank soldier, and I'm not not even much higher rank, uh, is it, it, going to punish you for that. And this is one of those instances where I like the you were initially going for pressure and then you went passive to the end. So the soldier shoots at you. He's chasing you, you can hear him. Stay over here, he's by himself. Throw a damage orb at him, put the pressure on him. Putting that pressure on him is going to do more than trying to outheal what's going on over here, right? And I think a lot of people don't really understand. You can't outheal most things because there are potentially five sources of damage, and there are a, in this instance, a maximum of two sources of healing. So if you're taking damage from multiple sources, like they are. You're not going to be able to outheal it. So when you're trying to outheal it, you're basically making your team down a player because you're doing stuff that isn't helping. So in that instance, you would want to do, put more pressure. So I like the damage orb there, but like he's the one that's being a pain in the ass. Kill him. So he really wants to punish you, and he got punished for it because he overextended. You can do that too. They don't fade into danger. Fading towards the Formatra is always is just super dangerous. And it seems like <laughs> you get punished for that a lot. So, you know, when, when you're. Uh, and another thing is, you know, when you die, think about why you died. Why did I die there? Well, I died because I faded into danger and they all killed me. So, moving forward, don't do that. Don't fade into danger. Right? It's okay to make mistakes. Uh, you know, what hems people up is when they keep making the same mistake over and over again. And some of that comes from, they don't know it's a mistake, and that's okay. That's part of learning the game. You know, what's a mistake and what's not. F aggressively fading like that with no cooldowns is a mistake. So, now you know. Pointless damage orb. Use the map geometry. I mean, think about that a lot. You know, when you're practicing using your orb, I like to put the pressure on him. He's good. Yeah. So, practice bouncing orbs off of officers. Of you're, you're opening in Aramaka's face again. Okay. You see how you got absolutely no value out of that? When you practice your solo you're like, okay, I'm using my solo essence now, and this is why. You give yourself a list of a list of reasons why you're using solo essence now. If it's against full health targets, don't do it, because you're not going to do much. the The only time you can use coal essence against full health targets is when you want to make space, which is kind of what you were doing, but it's it's not useful space. You have to, you have to be able to use it, and in it, in the in a rank like this, uh, creating space. I, I would less use the ultimate for creating space. How did you not get punished here? Yeah, the, the research is kind of cool. So. so, yes, Coalescence is good for making space, but I, I would use that like if I had a passive tank or something like that. Uh, your tank is not passive. So, um, not, not really something that you need to you need to worry about, at least probably probably for a while so you see how you're just kind of standing here doing nothing don't do that see how he's standing there doing absolutely nothing don't do that either good right. damage Moira is excels at, at getting in 
to places and then getting out of them really quickly. All right. So use that to your advantage. Good. Secure the low health kill. Okay. Okay. Good fade, but faded into those. They didn't kill you. Okay. He should have killed you there. So you knew the Ramatra was right here when the soldier ulted. This is part of like looking around, knowing what's going on around you. Fading into here, well, the Ramatra is just going to come in here and kill you. Okay. So fade and get behind cover, like over here. Is it going to leave your tank out, you know, out to dry, basically? Yes. But though it's worse if you're dead. You might get to fade back out. Now this guy doesn't have the wherewithal to finish you off, right? But it, it, you don't have to climb very high where they will. So let's talk about this. Coal essence. It looks like you're coal essencing to heal. Uh, again, not a fan of coal essencing for healing. I'm a fan of either doing damage or damage and healing. Uh, Again, it's very, very rare for me to do a coalescence specifically because I need to heal somebody. And you see how that kind of screwed you? Because you rotated what looks like for no reason, right? And that used several seconds of your ultimate where it was getting zero value. Again, remember if, I, you know, if Blizzard made coalescence three seconds, how useless that ult would be. Okay. So we're doing, we're doing nothing right now. Seven, six, five. Still basically doing nothing because you're not hitting anybody. Four, right? Th three of the seconds, three of the eight seconds, we're shooting a wall right? or open air, right? And then once again, he's in nemesis form. He's going to kill you. Don't coalesce near a Ramatra. Just, just don't do it. Like this is about, about the end of it. So that, that I'm, I don't need to watch the last few seconds here. Uh, so that's that's it, right? So what I like. Uh, I think your positioning is decent. You know, it, it's uh, you fade into trouble a lot, which is interesting because most people just get into trouble and then use their fade to get out of it. Um, you're kind of the other way around. You fade into trouble and then you get punished for it. Uh, so just stop doing that, right? If you're going to fade aggressively, again, why? Why am I doing this? There's a reason for it. Well, I'm fading aggressively because this guy's got 10 health left and I want to finish him off. Okay, that, that's valid. Or I'm fading aggressively to get over here so I can coalescence. Cool. Uh, but if it's I'm fading over here and none of those things are going to happen, then why did I fade? So uh, continue using cover. I, I like that. I, th I think you use cover uh, pretty well. So just, but keep improving that. Stay near corners, stay on places where instead of having to use fade, you can just duck behind a corner. Uh, when you fade out of danger, ensure you're fading to somewhere that's also out of danger. So, right, a, a few times there you, you faded into the Ramatra. So just keep in mind that's knowing when that's going to happen or how to avoid that is comes from looking around a lot and knowing what's going on, going on around you. Okay, so and then your orbs and coalescence usage, um, they need the things that I said, right? Use the coalescence with purpose. Use your orbs with purpose. Um, and use the map geometry to your advantage. So uh, hopefully that gives you enough to work with for a little bit. I think um, they have a lever. Just notice that. Um, I think you have enough here. Uh, I, I, you got some really good foundations. You just got to work on some of the abilities and, and kind of learn in the game a little bit. So uh, let me know if you have any questions and good luck.